Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and my, what an announcement we have had this morning from Adobe about Photoshop. We are now able to integrate and use to our advantage AI technology within Photoshop. I've got a couple different videos coming out, so make sure you check them all out. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to use generative AI and generative fill to remove any object in your image. So let's get started. The first thing that you wanna make sure you've done is downloaded the Photoshop beta. Now this is beta number 24.6 and you can find it in your Creative Cloud app. All you need to do is go to the beta app section on the left-hand side of your Creative Cloud app locate the Photoshop and choose either download or update. You do want to make sure that you are downloading version 24.6. That is going to be the version of the public beta that has all of these new features included in it. Once you have done that, I've got an image up here and I'm going to go ahead and try and remove these shoes. Now, the way we used to do it was a little bit convoluted, although it has been getting very good and very smart over the last couple of years, thanks to AI technology. But now that generative AI and Firefly technology has been integrated into Photoshop, it's gotten a hundred times better. So all you've got to do is start with any selection tool. So for this, I'm going to just activate my lasso tool by hitting the L key. I'll go ahead and zoom in. Photoshop wanted to make an easy way for all of the next steps that you would innately do after doing one certain thing in Photoshop had a little location where they were all linked together. So if you make a selection, you're either going to want to fill that with something or you may want to invert that selection or feather that selection. Those are all different things that you can do once you have made a selection. So what Photoshop has done is they have created the contextual menu bar and it's going to just be that one place where all of those next steps or logical next steps that you might do are housed. So that's what you see here. There is also an option for it in your window menu. If you come down here and scroll down to the bottom, you can see contextual taskbar right there. Okay, so you can take it away or you can check the box next to it and bring it up. You do have the option, sometimes this can get a little bit um, in the way, if you will. So you can choose to pin your contextual taskbar somewhere where you know it's out of the way. So for example, if I click and drag it up here, right here to the top right of my screen, it'll be easy for me to use, but then also I won't have it bouncing around my screen. And to pin it here, I can go ahead and just pin, just use the three dot menu and choose pin bar position, and then it's not going to move around for me. So that's very helpful. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to go ahead and select these shoes. I'm going to use the lasso tool to do that. You can hit the L key on your keyboard to bring up your lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around the shoes. And then in my menu bar that I have, you've got a few different options. We have generative fill, which is our AI based uh, fill option. It's kind of like content aware fill, but content aware fill is only going to look at the border of the selection that you have and use that information to make its fix. Content generative fill is going to beam this image up to the cloud and it's going to process it up in the cloud and then give you amazing results right back onto your device. So you do have to be connected to internet for this feature to work. So if I just go ahead and tap generative fill on my contextual menu bar, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually just without prompting anything we're not without putting any info or text into this 
uh, box right here, I'm just going to go ahead and choose generate again. And you will see my menu bar pop up or my progress bar pop up. And there we go. The shoes have been removed. There's a couple different things that I wanted to just point out though. Photoshop is going to give you three different suggestions or examples or variations of this fix for you. Now you can cycle through those right here on the contextual menu bar by uh, using the left and right arrow keys. Or if you have your properties window open, you'll be able to see them down here in the variation section. So you can see one, two and three. Those are the different variations that were created. Okay. So if I come down here, I can tap on one, I can tap on the next one and I can tap on the next one. But as you can see, these three different variations, all three of them look incredible. And I would be happy if that was the only one that I had had for this specific removal. So yes, that was a little bit easy. Let's take it up a notch and let's see what it can do on a harder image. So I've just switched over to this image here where we've got a little pup in the um, lavender fields. And again, I've got my contextual menu bar right up here. So I'm just going to move that around for the time being. I'm going to use my lasso tool again and I'll come in here and make a selection around this strange thing that I'd like to take out of the frame. I'm again going to choose generative fill, click on that once and then without putting anything into the prompt box, I'm going to just hit generate. And what this is going to do again, take that image up to the cloud. It's going to process it on the cloud and then bring me three different results to see if I like any of them. And so here are our variations, one, two, and three. And I would like to say I like variation number two the best. So let's move on. Okay. The last thing that I want to do is really test this because this image has a very shallow depth of field. So I want to see if we are going to run into any issues if I try and remove the pup. So let's go ahead. We're going to select the puppy dog right here in the middle of these um, flowers. And then again, we're going to choose generative fill. And then we're going to choose generate just one more time and see what we get. Again, we're going to have three different variations, but if I zoom in here and look at the results from this, I would have to say that I am mighty impressed with the different results that I've gotten for removing that puppy dog from the scene. Usually if we were going to be using content aware fill, it would just look at the areas around where our selection is and it would use that information to make our fix or what it thinks is going to be the best replacement pixels for the item that we are trying to remove. In this situation, it does it differently on the back end. You can't see the difference, but this is actually beaming your image up to the cloud processing the entire image, taking the entire image in as a reference and using AI to make a seamless uh, fix for the area that we're trying to remove. So we're going to go one step further and we're going to see if we can actually get a bad result from this. I'm just going to make a selection of this ball right here and its reflection. Choose generative fill again, generate one more time and let's see what we get. So here we have two different options and you can see that I definitely like the first option. There we go. Here we have a little bit of a snafu. Again, this is in beta, but that is fine. If anything like that happens, you can always let Adobe know about the issue by choosing either the thumbs up good result or thumbs down poor result. So I'll go ahead and choose the poor result for that so that they know that that was definitely not what I was looking for. 
But if anything like that happens, you can always choose generate again, and it will give you three new variations of what you are trying to fix. So that's very helpful as well. So while I've got you here, while we're waiting for those results, I wanted to just take a moment to make sure that you do watch the other videos in this series that I'm releasing today, because there are four new things that I really want to make sure that you know about by the end of today that were in the big announcement. So definitely check all those out. Remember to like and subscribe because that helps me grow my audience. And the other thing, I want to know what's your favorite thing that has been announced today from our new beta that we have, okay? So put that in the comments below. So as you can see here, the three, I'm just gonna pull this down just a little bit. The three new variations that I got, I think are much better than the initial three and I can see one, two, three, all three of those look amazing. All three of those incorporated in the reflection and fix the reflection as well. Isn't that incredible? I think it is pretty great. So I'm pretty happy with those results. In this last one, I'm actually just going to see if I can um, get rid of the woman completely. So, what I'll do is I'm just going to make a selection of just her, but not the moon, okay? So we're gonna make a selection around her, and again, I'm just using my lasso tool. This is, this is I would say, the most complicated uh, image that we've done so far. And we're just gonna select around her only, but not the moon. Just cleaning up my selection just a little bit. All right, we're gonna choose generative fill again and just go straight to the word generate. If you'd rather not use the contextual menu bar, you do have the option to come into edit and choose generative fill from the edit menu. We'll choose that. And we're just gonna choose generate to see if we can get rid of the person holding the moon but keep the moon. So we'll see, crossing my fingers here. All right, so there is our fix. All right, here's the entire image and our variations one, two, and three. All right, folks, I don't know about you, but I am pretty floored at just this first little sneak peek into the new features that Photoshop is releasing in today's announcement. So this is promptless removal. It is part of the generative AI and generative fill feature that they are integrating. Remember that this is in the public beta. It's not in Photoshop yet. So again, like, subscribe, and please share this information. You guys are the first ones to hear about it, and I want everybody else to hear about it too. So if you can share it on social media, get the word out that there are new amazing features coming to Photoshop and let you be the smarty pants that lets everybody know about it. If you'd like, you can check out my ebook, 20 Photoshop retouching tips. These are my, this is the holy grail of all of the retouching tips that I use on every single image that I retouch. And until then, check out the other videos that I am releasing today because there are three more features that I cannot wait and tell you about.